Oh, I'm getting. Yeah, well, that's the thing. They're they're blocking the actual single. It's yeah. It's not that I don't have a have a single. They're blocking, it, so I can't you know put anything out. Okay, so we're we're gonna be seeing police here. We already have one uh, drive by. Uh, they're blocking my use stream once again, and uh, from circumstances of the last couple days, I wasn't able to charge up my external uh, internet service. So excuse the interruptions. And uh, I'll try and keep this going as much as possible for you guys. No, 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 don't be sorry. You're doing a good job. Keep it up. Keep it up. Yeah. Say what? I didn't know you were here. Yeah, I know. If I, if I let you know, you don't want to talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah? Okay, let's see. It. Let's see. It. <laughs> it's all right. I'll walk away. Okay, had to try and get all the other Occupy movements that was trying to follow along with the stream. Sorry about that little delay in there and quietness. 
Um, we have a local PD that's been driving by. They're already starting to block my single. And uh, through the troubles that we've been having the last couple days, uh, we were unable to uh, get my uh, external uh, internet charged up. So I'm using uh, AT&T's line, and of course we all know that, that uh, AT&T loves allowing the PD to interfere with their single. And here we go. They're already throwing up. So, if there's any breaks, keep on to my Ustream. Just uh, go on to the Ustream channel itself at Revolution. Uh, Ustream Re Revolution Nova. And uh, I'll, I'll get it back up and going within seconds after that. So, uh, yeah, we're already starting to see some heat here. There was some very good uh, interviews that was done on the last stream just uh, minutes ago. So, uh, go back if you can and uh, check them out and find out what's actually going on here. In a uh, real short, we have uh, Bishop Estates that is evicting people out of their homes while uh, being uh, a type of slumlord by allowing uh, mold, floods, and uh, uh, a whole mess of injustices, uh, a whole mess of different things that's unsafe and uh, uh, health threatening and uh, has caused trauma to many people on this island. And uh, this family here is uh, standing up and saying, this needs to stop. So uh, we're here in solidarity with them to, uh, in landlord injustice. And uh, maybe give a mindset to people that there's more issues going on in this island than most people uh, know about. And uh, not only are they ca creating third world countries, or not countries, sorry, but third world areas throughout the island, they're evicting more and more people and creating the societies that they want to attack and uh, steal from and kick their children out of schools and, uh, you know, the beat on people and, you know, the injustices that go on around here has just gone crazy. It's become a corporate uh, entity here in Hawaii and uh, the people, they don't care about it at all. But what they got to realize, if it wasn't for the people, they have no corporations to make the money with. So they need to start solving problems instead of creating problems. Let's see if I can get another interview. Would you be willing to do a short little thing of what you feel about this? It's just a sad day that the Hawaiian people are not treating their own people with being Pono. So it's sad. This is the only way that they understand, you know. So, well, hopefully they understand now that we're not going to go away. Um, we're going to fight for you know what is right and hopefully we can come to some kind of resolve with it and you know go back to being Hawaiian people together and not right. separated like this well I mean now Bishop Estates under my understanding is a trustee for uh, some of the funds and lands that was that was provided for the Hawaiian people on, you know on various islands correct that's right and uh, so uh, with that, you have people that's Hawaiian that's uh, taking upon the lands, like what's in the trust, you know, that's been trusted to them, yeah. and they're creating situations that's sort of like a slumlord type of ad attitude, where they're allowing mold and and uh, floods and various different things that's life and health threatening to individuals. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct. And in, in some of the instances, that I think they've just kind of lost track of of what's more important and because of the whole money making thing of it all that you know you, you get a lot more I think um, a lot more respect and a lot more support from the people if you just give them a little help once in a while. Right. Well, well, what, fair. well we, all, yeah. we all understand that this it's a business regardless and they gotta they gotta account for the money and they gotta make the money last as long as possible what the problem is is that they're not seeing to the needs of the people it's like they forgot the the personal situation the, the person that they're trying to be helping and they've gotten more involved with dealing with the corporation aspect of it yes, correct yes. yeah I think they, they forget that the individual families is what creates the communities which creates 
the um, you know what's what's driving what they need to make in the money comes from the individual right. family. Right. Yeah. If it wasn't for people, you know, there'd be no corporations to even worry about. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, everybody understands they got to make money, but it's 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 being humane in how they do it because this, this is not only just people. This is actual families. This is exactly. friends, families, neighbors, mothers, daughters. You know, fathers, sons. I mean, grandparents. This is. This is decades of, uh, of of culture here that they're affecting, you know, and and here the money is supposed to be helping these people, correct? That's correct. Um, it's just I don't know. I think that they just got them blinded by the whole thing, and th there are rules, we know that, but you know they need to follow them too. Exactly. And I think that exactly. you know, they're, they're they like to quote you know what their policies are and the rules are, but then when you Said back to them, they, oh, they don't, they don't know about right. that one, and we don't recognize that. Well, why not? Well, that's what you. That's why it comes into the slumlord ideology. Exactly. You know, it's if it doesn't benefit them, then it's not worth dealing with. Yeah. And, and, that, if, and, and if you can't see it, then it don't, it don't matter. Right, and that's why you guys are out here. That's why we're out here, so they can see that no, we're people, we're family, we're following the rules. They need to follow the rules. Exactly. That's all. We just, just be fair. Exactly. Thank you very much. Thank you. How's it going, Michael? Thank you for showing up. We got another occupier coming up, showing solidarity. I had to catch a cab to get here, I'm so mad. Oh my. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so it's good to have more support show. So what do you think of the situation? Oh yeah, I'm going to put you on camera. You're here. Honk to tell Kamehameha Schools evicting homeowners is wrong. Is that your only statement? <laughs> she don't want to be on camera. Okay, it's cool. I'll walk away. <laughs> At least she's willing to be out here on the street. That's a good deal. Good people. And landlord in justice like Mr. Best State. Our home is paid off. Our home is paid off. Mr. Best State. You're not above the law. Yeah, that's a good idea. We have Doug's, uh, Doug is now you streaming. We're you streaming each other here. So if you're watching both of them, you might got some weird echo effect going on. But but because of uh, what's going on with him attacking my channel, he's, he's volunteered to jump on like he always does. He's a real good advocate for you stream. So uh, if you have a disconnect with me, jump on his or vice versa. We'll keep it, we'll keep it going. Yeah. Yeah, Honolulu Doug. Yeah, Honolulu Doug. Check him out. He's a good guy. <laughs> okay, we are now uh, across the street. And uh, so that way the traffic that's splitting up here has means to be able to uh, uh, see what's going on here instead of just one side of the road. I think that tactic is going to be uh, well needed. It's Especially with here with the monument there, you can't miss it, right? <laughs> so uh, even out in the middle of the street, we got this going.
very powerful stuff. Good interviews here. Woo! So for you, I see we got a couple more people on here for you to to know what's going on. Uh, Bishop Estates is allowing a slumlord attitude here by allowing mold floods. This particular family has had four floods and a mold epidemic that has created health problems for their family. And uh, they're after spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to fix not their personal land but uh, uh, Bishop Estates land so they would stop flooding their own personal homes out Bishop Estates decided that they were going to kick them out so uh, we're here in solidarity to help protect their homes and uh, let them know that we're not going to allow this so today and tomorrow we're going to have a protest here to allow to allow them uh, the means to think about what they're doing before we get into the real battle when it comes to down the road on our on the ideas that we have. So anyhow, in landlord and justice, that's what we're here for today. HPD still standing by. Okay, just to allow you guys to know, the chat line is operational. I finally got that back up and going. Um, I've been uh, attacked when HPD got here, and uh, they're trying to shut my single down. So, But it's still going. I was finally able to get my uh, chat line on. So if you guys have any uh, insight or if you guys want to hear some more information about something or uh, you want to see some go on, uh, go ahead and view your points, and uh, we'll see what we can do for you. If uh, somebody could possibly get a hold of Occupy Hilo for us, um, like I said, I was unable to get my external internet running, so if we can get a mirrored site on here so some of the load can be taken off this Ustream and maybe uh, keep it going, that'd be great if somebody can get a hold of them. I see we got a person out there helping out and uh, that's uh, getting this out on FB. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's a local occupier. This is great. I have a low connection uh, warning that's coming up, so if it connect, if it disconnects, I'll be right back on. Just pay attention. You'll see it. So uh, if somebody could get a hold of Occupy Hilo, see if they can mirror this, maybe take some of the load off my Ustream so I can keep this channel going for you guys. Okay, we've been told that there's a fishing pole out here. Anybody know of a fishing pole? Huh? There's a fishing pole out here. Anybody know? Oh, I think I know what he's talking about. We can make a fishing pole. Anybody have some donuts and uh, uh, some string? I mean, I don't want to leave our friendly uh, HPD uh, standing there just with nothing to do. I want to give them some insight. You know, or maybe some incentive. That's better said. Incentive. Give them some incentive to move and pay attention right they're looking at their phones and texting they're they're that one is more into his phone than i am and i'm used to it <laughs> well, I, just, I just think it's funny because we're not paid but it, you know, but here we're we're putting our heart and soul into trying to deal with stuff, and this person's paid, and all he's talking to doing is dealing with his honey or something. Yeah. You know. 
Well, it's a perception thing, right? That's what they well, tell us, correct? Yeah, they tell yeah. us it's all perception. So if I'm perceiving that we're paying for him to have the social uh, time. <laughs> you know, I should get paid to have social time. I think I should get paid to have social time, right? Yeah. I think we both, all of us should get paid to have social yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, like, I'm living off like, 20 bucks a week. <laughs> like, $3 a day. <laughs> All right, let me answer him back. Uh, Damien's uh, wanting to try and get the fishing pole thing going, and well, I, I, I just... Damien uh, was the last person to add my fishing pole. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Damien was the last person to add my fishing pole. I don't know how to take that. It's okay. <laughs> I'm talking about fishing pole. <laughs> what are you talking about, Nova? <laughs> I'm... No, never mind. I can't get it out of the gutter when I'm living in the sewer. <laughs> You're not living in the sewer and living in Thomas Square. It's a small difference. It's a small difference, right? It's a small difference. I mean, I live in Thomas Square. So I can Thomas Square is great, right? But we live on the sidewalk of Thomas Square. We're not... Right. No, yeah, no, no. Uh, okay. I realize because we're still not living in the raw sewage, right? We're not living in untempered shit. <laughs> We're not living in the Alouette, the stuff that produces oh, what's in the Alouette. That's, no, <laughs> that's another injustice that Hawaii should be taking a look at. Oh, have you Clean seen, up the Alouette. Have you seen, have you seen those uh, mutant shrimp? Like no, I haven't seen mutant oh, shrimp, and I don't think that'd be good for me. You just use your smartphone and, and pull that stuff. <laughs> oh, you mean with the big snapper? Yeah, they're like the size of like small lobsters or something. Yeah. yeah. yeah <laughs> shrimp. Okay. So we have mutant shrimp to look out for, and landlord injustice, <laughs> and fishing line and donuts. <laughs> Dude, if I had donuts, I'd help you out. <laughs> yeah, no right. I, I no right. fun. Yay! Okay, we're still across the street. Doing good. Everybody's calm. Midori's holding the front there, screaming at everybody and letting them know. <laughs> Okay, let's get another uh, take out there. Let more of the community or the world know. Oh gosh. So how about it, Doug? You got something to say to the camera? Honolulu, Doug again. Hey, hi, yeah, you know, I 
I quit live streaming because I was running out of some power, but I want to reserve some in case uh, anything happens. Because every now and then there is a surprise in these things. So I heard, uh, what was the deal with you? You were getting harassed by the police the other day. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that was interesting. Um, I, I was walking down uh, Wilder about a block before uh, Kamoku. Yeah. And uh, an officer just pulled up right next to me, flashed his lights on, cut off the intersection. And uh, so I took a quick picture of the officer and sent yeah, it out. And then, uh, yeah, he, he just started asking me uh, what I'm doing, where am I going. You know, of course, my answer is none of your business. Right. You know, I asked him if I was being detained or arrested. And uh, he just kind of gave me a funny look and wouldn't answer. So I told him to, well, F off and just kept yeah. on walking. Well, then he sent three squad cars after me. Oh, and then uh, they came up doing the same thing, and I basically told them, you know, screw you all. That's if, total harassment. Yeah, you, you don't. If you if you want to talk to me, it's easier to come up and say, hey, I recognize you from such and such. I had a right. couple questions, right. and if there are questions about what we're there for or why we're there or what's going on, I can deal with it. Right. But right. you want to ask personal questions of where I'm at, where I'm going, and what I'm doing, and uh, not have a warrant or any probable cause that I'm up right. to something no good, then screw up and so i walked away from the three officers and then the one officer that comes up that originally stopped me drives up on top of the curb to circle back around i mean literally onto the sidewalk not just on the dirt here or grass drives up on the sidewalk and then uh chases me down and uh i just kept on walking i got on the bridge and then farther down i seen they had uh, another squad car with his lights on waiting for me so i ducked off and uh what was that? Uh, Rasta headquarters. <laughs> you know, it's good old Rasta people yeah. help you out, right? So, yeah, so I, I, I stuck out in there for a while, and uh, they sent a couple people by, and then finally they gave up, and then it was a normal day again. But yeah. it was just, uh, you know, I think none of the officers... Like yeah, that. well, none of the officers I recognized. I, I, they had nothing to do with uh, our oh, encampment or anything. The usual guy right, so I think what it was is somebody was like, oh, I remember him. Right. And, uh, you know, I seen his picture somewhere, did whatever, and so they just, uh, he was curious, but he doesn't know how we deal. Right. So, he, he just basically got served. <laughs> Good, here's my side, and, uh, the Vegas family, Ohana, if you're on the mainland or you're trying to figure this out, Ohana means family, the Vegas family is what we're talking about. Malama means to take care of, to care for, and the, uh, the um, mission of uh, Kamehameha Schools which was started by Bernice Pawahi Bishop to help the education of uh, Native Hawaiian Kanaka Maori. The school part, the Vegas family has no problem with, but the Bishop Estate part, the money-making side of it, is huge. Um, they're unassailable, you know, so no one's had a protest like this in front of Bishop Estate headquarters until now because some people like us don't know better and that's why we're here. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're the biggest, aren't they the biggest landowner they are, here in Hawaii? They're the biggest landowner. Yeah, you know, and I mean, most of that property was set aside for these causes for, right. for the Hawaiians and stuff, and here, what they're basically doing is okay so they're offering the lands but they're abusing their power by creating what i what I'm, i've been basically calling is like a slumlord type of attitude you know these are beautiful properties don't get me wrong but when they allow like them four types four times of flooding and then all the mold and the health risks and everything that these this family has had to go through that's slumlord Right, and you know, Bishop Estate, we found out recently that also leases land to GMO corporations like Monsanto, um, you know, which is obviously against, um, it's not really pro Hawaii or for the Hawaiian people at all. Um, but they, what, have, now, they have huge uh, stock holdings, and their portfolio has never been audited to, to check for its value, its harm to uh, Hawaii and the Hawaiian people. That should actually be a real basic kind of requirement. That's partly why I. Well, when they originally under Kamehameha schools, correct? And now, right. now they're just separating the school system to try and save face for the school. And yeah, well, and they're, actually, it's the same. Right? Yeah, it's the same. It's the same entity, but it's a different name. Well, and it's Bishop of State is uh, Bishop of Trust, which is money supposed to go for the school for education. 
and you know, everybody in Hawaii knows Bishop Estate because Bishop Estate is, is like where the money comes for Hawaii education. And I, I myself went to Lahaina Luna. I was a boarding student at Lahaina Luna for two years. So I, I know a lot about the Hawaiian culture. And, you know, they're not they're not maligning the people. They're not they're 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 becoming an entity in themselves. And this thing about GMO, they're hurting the whole world by allowing the seeds to be manufactured to spread the control of crops all around the world. And that wouldn't have never happened if it wasn't nobody was pay, you know, was paying attention to what was going on. This is why we need to bring this out in the open. Yeah, we yeah. need to bring it out in the open. We need to tell you, hey, the legislature doesn't like it. The city council passed a resolution on this saying GMO is bad. Why isn't the, the bishop of state still allowing their lands to be loosed, leased to the right. and that, and, that, and that's the big question. Well, that also deals with sustainability here. It's supposed to be land for the Hawaiians, and if they're they're using a, a seed that's un, unsustainable, you got to keep replacing the seed. Right. So it costs the community and the islands more money in the long run, and who knows what kind of health risk that could actually come from it 20, 30 years from now. Well, the biggest thing it has to do with flooding. They changed the rip the the rivers which is causing major flooding, which is damaging homes that they never had any problems with before, and all of a sudden, they're having major flooding. So, you know, they could fix the rivers. They could, do you know, make it more, uh, but they don't want to spend the money. They do not, They the way they look at it is we own the property, the lease runs out in a certain amount of time, we take over the property, we do whatever we want. We don't have to do anything. We don't have to pay for inter any infrastructure. And, that, and, 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 you know, any other landowner that came in white, they have to build the roads, they have to put in lights, you know, they have to do sewage. Bishop of State feels that they don't have to do that. And that's a problem. Because now the state has to pay for that. That comes out of everybody's tax money. So, you know, Bishop of State should be held to the same standard as any landowner in Hawaii. If you're going to have properties, you should pay for the infrastructure. It should come out of your overhead budget. And that's not happening. That's what needs to be happening here. They need to pay for that. Should have paid for it a long time ago. But now they're, now they're standing back and they're going, we don't need to pay for that. You know, that we, we weren't the one that caused the flooding. That's God's will. That's not God's will. That's your will. You're the one that made the water come down. So, right. Well, you know, that also means, you know, because they prolonged it and, and pushed it aside, because of the American economy and its inflation, it's actually costing them a lot more money to do the same amount of work than what it would have if they would have just fixed it to begin with correctly. Right. You know, and, it's, and you hear some arguments of people saying that, uh, well, if they spend all this money in the infrastructure, then they'll lose the money that's meant for the people, but I feel personally, if they don't spend the money to keep it up, they'll lose the property and everything and the, and the use of this kind of property anyways. So I think they're just doing this so they, they can get the property back. They knock the home down, they, just, they keep everything. It's like any other where you own the property. You own the property until the house is gone. Once the house is gone, you don't own the property anymore. So, you know, that's where I was talking about modular housing and moving a home. You own the home, you don't own the land it's on. Because the government can tax you until you can't move. So, that's a good ho uh, uh, solution for Hawaii because the land is so expensive here. Yeah, well, you know, the, my union, the machine union, is pushing for modular housing in Hawaii. And, the, and we're thinking about building on the big island uh, where we set up a... Habitat for Humanity situation where retired shipyard workers that own property on the Big Island can actually take a home and convert it for solar panel or water catchment so they're exempt uh, from having to get all these utilities and everything which the landowners aren't providing. So by having it built into the system, now you have a home that you can move and that you can go to lot to lot. We also want to make it so that uh, we have a system where we can move the home if the lava flow comes within a certain <laughs> That's so. important. And that's really important. But what we do is we take a park and we donate it to the city, and then we put a lien on it. It allows the home to be put there if there's a lava flow that comes within a mile. And by doing that, 
will uh, be able to get insurance, which means people can get loans from the bank. So they can actually get a house instead of having to build a house from scratch. And that's what they don't have with the big on. And we're in the process of doing that. We've actually passed a, a resolution at the Democratic Party convention twice. The first time we got to the Senate, 17 senators signed on. This, uh, as soon as it went to the House, the chair of the housing department scrapped the language and put in stuff about Franny May and Freddie Mac. Well, I think it was because of the carpenters who didn't like it, because we're talking about steel frame homes that get that and are stronger and things like that. They didn't like it, so they, they kind of put some money and get killed. But we're going to come back again, and we're going to do it again, and this time we're going to pass it. And we're going to pass it based on the workers getting involved in it, labor unions, uh, across the board. We need to build homes for white, and we need to stop this harassing the homeless people that know money. We need to start making money for everybody. That's good. Well, I'll vote for you. Oh, wait, you're not running for anything. Not not running for anything. <laughs> but what he said is true. You know, Hawaii has the highest uh, housing cost of anywhere. The median price of a single family home on this island is $650,000. That's over three times the national uh, average. Because they don't want to be responsible. And the pay isn't that high. The pay is lower, the price of housing is higher. And you know what's ironic about that? We also have the largest amount of homes that are empty. Because we have empty homes. And why are they empty? Because they're being held in, in the, uh, to keep the land values high. People can't afford to pay for them. But if you say the home is worth $600,000, then the home is worth six hundred thousand dollars. So these, the banks over here are using the the, whole, the empty homes as as, as the prop of everything else. A lot of the condominiums over here are sixty to seventy percent empty, and then people don't know this. And what they do is corporations buy the apartments and they come in during the winter time and they use that as a tax write -off. So we need to start making languages. If you don't live here. You don't. You, you pay taxes for that property unless you have somebody living in it. That way we can take everybody off the street, white housing. Say you pay more money if that place is empty. If it's not empty, then you don't have to pay. Reduce the cost of housing as well. That's a good plan. That's interesting, anyway. Yeah. It's, a, it's a kind of like a rent control, but it's worse. If you don't, if you don't fill up your rooms, then you pay the cost of the room. Right. I mean, why, why should you have an eight-bedroom house if you don't put anybody in? That's right. Thank you very much. <laughs> Lots to think about there. <laughs> Okay, so it's raining out here, <laughs> and they're still attacking my freaking internet. This is great. So far, I've been able to keep the connection going, luckily. So, uh, okay, guys, I'm going to sign off for just a few minutes here and uh, check back in, uh, I'd say, about three to five minutes, and I'll start up another one. I want to keep them short and small so it's easier for people to go back and... Uh, go through each of these interviews that we've had. We've got a lot of good information here to allow allow means for people to have an understanding of some of the things going on here in Hawaii. And uh, well thank you for tuning in tuning in. I'll see you in just a few more minutes.